extra, Yankee for the police. Why is that, Lieutenant? Special extra, just out, 11 o'clock edition. Why is that, will you? Special edition, just out, Lieutenant. Just out now, Lieutenant. Special edition. Later, second. The fire table, Lieutenant. Will you? The fire table. Read about the bat. All about the bat. The bat. What was our bat? Some fire table. Will you? You won't get the bat. I'll let the bat take the jump out of you. Broadcasting from the police department. Warning to all citizens. From 11 p.m. sharp until midnight, the entire district in the neighborhood of the Bell residence between 4th and 5th streets and 2nd and 3rd will be absolutely restricted to all persons and completely surrounded and in the hands of the police. As they have been boldly notified by that mysterious criminal, the Bat, that he intends to enter Mr. Bell's home at that hour and extract from his safe that famous Rossmore necklace, which Mr. Bell recently added to his priceless collection of jewels. The public is hereby warned to keep out of this area in order not to embarrass the police who are making every effort and are confident that this time they will succeed in capturing that notorious madman who signs himself the Bat. This is Station KHB broadcasting from Police Department. Anything doing? Not yet. All covered? Yes, sir. The captain's in the house. Which is Bell's window? The lighted one, sir. Not even a fire escape. Everything all right, Mr. Bell? Quite all right, Captain. This is radio station KHB. The police evidently have succeeded in outsmarting the bat, as he failed to make good his threat of stealing the Rossmore necklace. Although Mr. Bell waited for him alone as requested, with the police on guard outside the door. Now this seems to prove that when the public is sufficiently aroused to the seriousness of criminal conditions, the underworld element has pressed. Bell. Bell. You got none, sir. The bell. Come on, boys. Come on, let's read. Police. 
Why waste time chasing rainbows? I always got what I go after. Bell was easy because his clock was fast and you boys were slow. Au revoir, leaving for the country to give the police a rest. Get Detective Anderson. We'll get this back. I tell you boys, I... No cheap crook is going to make a sucker out of me and get away with us. I was standing at the foot of the stairs, and I looked up, and I saw a gleaming eye. It winked at me. I tell you, this house is haunted. Rubbish. I've taken this house for the summer, and I intend to stay. Well, then you can stay in it alone. Why do you suppose the servants left? I don't think the housemaid ever had a pain in her side, and I don't think the cook ever had a sister. And her sister didn't have twins. They was just scared stiff, and they ran away because they saw it. You're a fool. Keep quiet. I won't keep quiet. I've worked for you for 20 years, and I guess I have a right to speak my mind. You haven't got a mind. If I had one, you wouldn't let me use it. I stuck by you when you was a theosophist and a suffragettist, and I've seen you through socialism. Fletcherism and rheumatism, but when it comes to spookism, I'm through. Shut up! <laughs> what is it? I saw a man in that window. <laughs> Nonsense. 
You're seeing things. Don't I know it? Well, the next time you see anything, tell me and scream afterwards. You scream first, you won't wait. Get the Ouija board. It's up there with the Bible on it to keep it quiet. Get it. Now, you're not asking me to go up there all alone, are you? No. Keep your mind a blank. You said I didn't have a mind. Well, keep what you have got a blank. I'm so scared. My teeth are chattered. I can hardly hold my upper set in. Quiet. Is Lizzie Allen right about this house? Or is she wrong as usual? said he's in the country. Let's hope it's some foreign country. What's that? I'm going to find out. <gasps> Well, tie it up now. What's that ladder doing in the laundry chute? I don't know. Maybe that caretaker put it by her. Careful, careful. Oh, no, ain't I careful? I wouldn't have him, only he worked for the Flemings and came with a lease. The bat! Fleming, the bank's president, is traveling in Europe and has not been reached. 
The police are spreading their dragnet in an effort to locate young Bailey, the cashier. Now, what on earth are you doing? I'm setting a bear trap for the bat if he ever comes flying around here. And I've got the other end fastened to the bed. Miss Neely, have me a look at the paper. Put on your glasses. I don't need no glasses. My eyes are all right. It's my arms. They ain't long enough. Now, do you see? Detective Anderson says that nobody's ever seen the bat. He might be a merchant, lawyer, doctor, or even a trusted servant. I don't know. This house gets on my nerves. Won't let me sleep. Don't trust him. Caretaker means servant. Bat! Who won't let you sleep? Ghost. <coughs> Listen, he's here again. He opens windows when I'm looking. And I can't see anything. He slams doors. And there's no one there to slam them. And rolls things down the stairs. And there's no one there to make him roll. And that ain't all. He whispers to me from behind the wall. <coughs> He's here again. Stay here long enough and you'll see. Let's go back to the city. I'll not go back. I won't be frightened. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Besides, I've sent for detectives. Detectives won't do you no good. The whole police force won't do no good. They can't stop ghosts. <laughs> Nobody can stop ghosts. There. Did you hear what he said? <laughs> he comes after me. I'm going to get him. Anybody will suspect. No, they don't know you. That helped. Now hurry, we've got so much to do. your liver. Take a pill and go to bed. I won't go to bed. I'm going to stay right here with you. Hello, Lizzie. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, Andy, the train was late. But young Mr. Fleming was kind enough to drive me over from the station in his car. Oh, I think the less you have to do with that spendthrift nephew of Fleming's, the better it'll be for you. Oh, but why, Andy? I don't like him. He leaves this house to me. Man wants to 
see you. Says his name is Brooke. He's a gardener. Looks funny to me. Yes, I, I meant to tell you I engaged him for you at the agency today. Well, what you standing there for? Show him in. In here? Of course. All right. I'm sure you'll find his references very satisfactory. He, he, he was three years in his last place. Hmm. So you're a professional gardener? Yes, ma'am. Know anything about perennials? Uh, yes, uh, they're the ones that hold their leaves in the winter. Had any experience with rubiola? Oh, yes. And um, alopecia? Yes, but uh, they, they dry up if you don't water them. Hmm. And what is your treatment for you to carry up? Oh, I... I thin it. You must show him to his room in the right upper wing. You mean next to mine? No, in the right upper wing. Oh. Oh, Dale. <coughs> you know young Bailey, the missing cashier of the bank? Why, yes, slightly. Why? Nothing. That new Geiger, I don't like his looks. Supposing he's the bad. Well, I know he's not a gardener. Huh? Because Uticaria is hives, Rubiola is measles, and Alopecia is baldness. And knowing all this, you're going to let him stay in this house? Mm -hmm until I find out why my niece brought him here. Oh, you're like all the rest of the women. A good-looking feller comes in the door, and your brains fly out the window. <laughs> Warning. Get out of this house while there is yet time. Disaster waits all who remain here. I'm leaving now. Dr. Van Rees to see you. Doctor? Lawyer? Merchant? Doctor? Bat? <laughs> Sorry to trouble you, Miss Van Gora. But circumstances surrounding the bank robbery in Oakdale made it imperative. Who do you think robbed the bank? The cashier, a young chap named Bailey. Got away with a cool half million, and all in cash, too. <laughs> and Mr. Fleming, the bank's president, is on his way back from Europe. Yes. It's on account of his unexpected return that I called. Now, Miss Van Gorder, it's only natural that he would expect you to arrange to vacate the house. Hmm. Well, he's not the only one interested in my vacating this property, Doctor. What do you mean? Read that. It was thrown through that window just before you came in. Oh, Doctor, uh, you might fasten that window. Sorry. That's the second warning I've had. Oh, of course. Then you decided to... Exactly. To remain right here. I don't intend to leave until I've learned the meaning of all this. Why, Doctor, you didn't fasten this window. Oh, I beg your pardon. I thought I did. Here. Yeah. A man by the name of Anderson wants to see you. You'll pardon me, Doctor? Certainly.
Your aunt is a very determined woman. Why, yes, she is. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I suppose the reason you answered my call so promptly was because I hinted that the bat might be connected with mysterious happenings in this house. Exactly. Well, I'm not sure that he is. However, I'll tell you everything so you can draw your own conclusions. Splendid. You should persuade your aunt to leave the house. It's too isolated. Two miles from the next village. Enough shrubbery around the ground to hide a dozen assassins. Oh, but Doctor, what enemies could my aunt have? There seem to be no matches. Well, I, I'll get you some. Very kind. Sorry to have troubled you. But tobacco is something every doctor forbids his patient, but prescribes it for himself. By <laughs> <laughs> right the way, is your aunt a revolver? Why, yes. It's late. Be sure to telephone if something happens. Because something serious is liable to happen in this house at any time. Good night. Young Fleming is a spendthrift of the worst kind. I say. And you think he leased this house to you without his uncle's consent, eh? Yes. To get the rent money, to gamble with. Mm. And now you think he's trying to frighten you out before his uncle's return. Is that it? How do you know Courtly Fleming's in Europe? Oh, I read it in the paper. You shouldn't believe everything you read in the papers, dear lady. But Dr. Van Rees said he had a cablegram from him. Did, um, did you see it? No. I thought so. I'm going to find out who's trying to frighten you out of this house, Miss Van Corder. Where do those stairs lead to? To the... Is that you, Lizzie? They heard you pounding. It doesn't sound hollow here. Brooke, when did you hear Courtley Fleming arrange with the architect for a secret room? They were talking in the office last summer. But when I came in, Mr. Fleming stopped. Well, then, then if there really is such a room, it must be in the new plans. Oh, if we could only find those plans. Dale, you're doing an awful lot for me. Well, you know why. <laughs> you bet. Oh, not now. I've got an idea. Oh, look. So you think there's a possibility of the bats being concerned in this? The bats liable to be concerned in anything where there's half a million dollars at stake. Here, 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 here. Wait a moment, wait a moment. Come here. I want to talk to you, but uh, would you mind uh, telling me your name? Well, I wouldn't mind. Well, 
Oh, what is it? Lizzie Allen. Lizzie Allen. Splendid. Do you like it? And uh, your age? Twenty-two. She's forty-two. Well, I ain't the only one in this house that's over forty. That will do. See, the coffee and rolls are placed in the library for Mr. Anderson. If you'll pardon me, I think I'll rest for a while. It's quite all right, quite all right. I've got plenty of work to do. The caretaker will show you to your room. He's the only servant we have at present. And he wouldn't stay if he wasn't crazy. Hello, Country Club. Is Mr. Dick Fleming there? Hello, Mr. Fleming. This is Dale Van Gorder speaking. Could you come over here? It's very important. The bank's money. Yes. Thank you. several times with no answer, so I used the passkey. Your call seemed urgent. What's wrong? The money stolen from the bank. I think it's in this house. What makes you think so? Here, here, here. Wait a minute. I want to talk to you.
Yes. A hidden room would show on the blueprint. That's what I thought. You might look in that old chest in the dining room. My uncle used to keep blueprints there. Oh, thank you. I knew you'd help us. What if I have? The money's here. Do you think I'm fool enough to turn it over to you? But it belongs to the bank. I only want to return it. Why should you be so anxious to return it? Because I want to clear Brooke. I'm engaged to him. And even my aunt mustn't know that until we can find the stolen money. Won't you help us? How do I know you're telling the truth? Well, if you don't trust me, there's a detective upstairs. Give him the plans and let's search together. A detective? What's a detective doing here? People have been trying to break in. What people? I don't know. Then the money is here. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to find that hidden room and I don't need the help of any detective. This is my uncle's house and everything in it belongs to him. If you leave this room with that blueprint, I'll scream. And if you do, I'll tell them the new gardener is Brooke Bailey, the missing cashier at the Oakdale Bank. Give me that blueprint. Oh! What? Give me those blueprints. by somebody. Did you see anybody? No. The flashlight blinded me. Oh. Who are you? The gardener. Gardener, eh? Mm, one shot fired. I fired that shot myself last night. <laughs> Splendid. Quick thinking, Miss Van Gorder. But I'm afraid I shall have to arrest your niece. You can't do that until after the coroner's verdict. And you'll have to wait to Dr. Van Nice for that. I see. Well, let me tell you something, Miss Van Gorder. When I find it necessary to make an arrest, I'll make it. And I'll not wait for any coroner's verdict. Now I'll tell you what to do. Take your niece over to that chair and say nothing to her. I'll do the talking. Well, you would have a detective. Now I hope you're satisfied. What became of the rest of this? I don't know. Where's the torn piece? I don't know. Don't lie to me. That torn piece showed the hidden room. And you shot young Fleming to get it. Oh, I didn't. No? Then, my dear young lady, how does it happen that the nephew of the president of the Oakdale Bank was killed in his uncle's house the night after the bank was robbed? And the only person present at his murder was the girl who's engaged to the runaway cashier. Engaged? Is that true, Dale? I'll say it's true. Yes. Did you locate the hidden room on this piece before it was torn? No. Did Fleming locate it? I don't know. I tell Are you... Are you listening to me? What joint is this? Who are you? Oh, I? Who do you think I am? 
W.T. Jones, Super Sloth of Oakdale County. Who are you? Did, uh, did you hire this fellow? Uh, yes, but over the telephone, from the Judkins Detective Agency. Oh. I'm in charge here. Lieutenant Detective Anderson of the city police. Did you look around outside? Did I? That's what I was doing when somebody sucked me with that piano. Dick Fleming, who killed him? That's exactly the reason I sent for you. I got you. Just give me time, lady. I ain't no cheap gumshoe. Detecting crime with me is uh, a work of art. The garagery. That's strange. There can't be anybody there. Just a moment. I'll answer that. Hello. Hello. Somebody calling for help in the garage. Hello. Hello. They've rung off. I'll see who it is. You stay there. from behind that wall. Shh! Stop it. Auntie, that painting moved. Oh, I feel somebody looking at us. Where? I don't know. I can't see them. But I can see you. And if you're not out of this house by morning, you'll suffer terrible consequences. Look, Andy, the picture's moving back into place again. Look behind that picture. Pardon my coming back, but I must have left my cigarette case. I'm so glad you returned, Doctor. A terrible thing has happened. Young Fleming has been murdered. Murdered? Yes, murdered. My niece will tell you everything. standing at the foot of the stairs when young Mr. Fleming started out. What stairs? The stairs in the living room. Why did young Fleming come here? I sent for him. Why did you send for him? You say you tore a piece of blueprint out of his hand? Yes, I... What became of it? Well, I... I was afraid to keep it, so I hid it in one of the rolls on the tray that Lizzie has just taken to the dining room. I see. May I have something to cover the body? Yes, of course. This 
do? Thanks, yes. Gosh, I'd like to get a headlock on the guy that pulled that painting stunt. You needn't be disturbed because the detective suspects your niece. I'll take care of that. Now, may I go in the next room and write my report about young Fleming's death? I'll fetch you some writing material. Don't trouble. May I close the door? Of course. Pardon me, won't you? May I inquire just who you are? I'm Dr. Van Rees. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Mrs. Van Corder explained about you. Well, my name is Anderson, Lieutenant Detective Anderson of the city police. And now that we're better acquainted, Doctor, I'll, uh, I'll presume to trouble you for that piece of blueprint. Blueprint? What blueprint? Why, the little piece of paper that you took from the tray. You're mistaken, Anderson. I took nothing from the tray. Then, my dear doctor, it's time I consulted my oculist. Are you insinuating that I'm a liar? You can call it anything you like. But I want that piece of paper. Thank you, Doctor. You know, it's peculiar, but sometimes these little bits of paper are very, very important. Really? Mm. Fireplace, eh? There are dozens of fireplaces in this house. Hidden room, fireplace. You don't believe in that hidden room, Bunk. It's the girl's imagination. Yes, quite possible, Doctor. Still, I... Uh, I wonder who's trying to frighten the ladies out of this house. Have you any idea? How should I know? Or I wonder if you happen to be very well acquainted with Courtley Fleming, who's supposed to be abroad. Huh? You needn't answer that question if it embarrasses you, Doctor. I don't know what you're driving at. But there is a limit. Well, let that limit stop where it interferes with my work. What do you mean? You heard what I said. Are you trying to mix me up with that bank robbery? I only know that young Fleming was killed in this house tonight, trying to locate that hidden room. But no one had better try to prevent me from locating it. You understand that, don't you, Doctor? Your insinuations are an insult. Sorry. I'll see you later, Anderson. Any time, Doctor, any time. Now, what on earth are you doing with that? It's for your feet, if you'll ever go to bed. Hmm. No answer at the garage. Strange Detective Anderson hasn't returned. 
Maybe he's found the guy that moved that painting. Uh, well, I hope somebody finds something around here pretty soon. I'm not tired. I can't stand any longer. Hey, what is it? Where is it? Mm, I'm scalded. <laughs> A minute ago, I couldn't stand. And, uh, no, I can't sit. <laughs> oh, Doctor. You haven't seen Detective Anderson, have you? Why? Went into the grounds a short time ago to make an investigation. Hasn't returned. Oh, suppose I go and look for him. Oh, thank you. Straight ahead. Get those people out of this house or I'll burn you alive. Don't turn around till you've counted ten. Start counting now. Now go. Oh, he's ill. Get some water. Don't wait. Don't go near him. Wait. Wait till I search him. Hey, ain't got nothing. Get a pillow. Who be you? Oh. oh. Here, drink this. You mean to tell me that you got booze in the house? Yes, for emergency. Then that's the reason everybody's trying to bust in here. But it's... These doors are locked! Who locked them? Who's he? Caretaker. Well, what's the matter with him? It's... He's coming! He's coming after us all! Who? The ghost. He, he said if it didn't get you all out of here, he, he would burn me to a crisp. What does this ghost look like? Awful. He was all in white, only he didn't have any face. It means he wore a mask. The doors! The lights are going out again! They shot at me! I quit, and I'm going to get out of here. How? I just saw Banker Fleming on the roof. Did you hear that gardener call our Dale? Gardener, nothing. He's the missing cashier of the Oakdale Bank. And I hereby arrest her for murder, robbery, larceny, and everything else that's wrong around here. Oh! Eddie, don't let him arrest Brooke. I made him impersonate a gardener so we might look for the hidden room and find the stolen money. I'm sure it's hidden in this house. Rot. Who would hide money in this house? Banker Fleming. What? He's in Europe. 
Brooke had to disappear to avoid arrest. There was evidence framed against him. Oh, we didn't want to deceive you, but... You didn't. Gardeners don't have manicured fingernails. When Detective Anderson comes, send him up to the attic. Miss Neely, ain't you going to take me with you? Oh, you're trouble enough on the ground floor. You'd be a nuisance on the roof. Oh. If I yell, you come. Who, me? Yes, you. Show me the exact spot on the roof where you think you saw Banker Fleming.
I don't know the combination. Don't lie to me. I'm not lying. You can't get away from me. Quiet. Quiet. Not a word. Not a sound. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you to hear. Stand still till I put my hands around your little white throat and squeeze and squeeze until you're dead. Who's in this room? Who came in this room? Get away from that safe! Help! Let me out of here! Let me out of here! Oh! Kill him! <laughs> Please kill him! Oh, oh, somebody come! Help me! Please help! Get me out of here! Oh, oh, get me out of here! behind that fireplace. It sounds like Dale. Oh, get some water, quick. Dale, Dale, what is it, darling? Speak to me. I wonder what all the salt and battery's doing. My instinct tells me we, we ought to get a doctor for him. I don't like that doctor. One good look at him would cure anybody. He ain't there. Who oh, ain't? Him. Why? Where? Where'd he go? Maybe you weren't there in the first place. Say, what are you trying to do? Trying to kid me? No. But we're all commencing to see things. And when you get like that, you gotta do something. And I'm gonna do it. Now don't tell anybody. Cross my heart. But you need a lot of courage around this shack. Nectar. <laughs> I'm blind. Who? Who's running up them stairs? Take me. There's someone in this room besides us. Where? Where's my matches? I, I got them. I got them. Say, what do you mean by putting out that light? What? I put it out? Mm. Give me back my bottle. You say there were two of them? And the bat shot the other one? Oh, it was terrible. I came up the back way. I saw your light and I thought it was Detective Anderson's. I've had no luck looking for him outside. Doctor, there's a man behind that fireplace. Well, if you'll hold this candle, I think we can find what's trying to frighten me out of this house. It was right here that I touched it. Doctor, hold that candle a little higher. I can see him in that corner. Say, what are you shooting at? Where is he? He, he didn't come down here. He must be hiding in one of the rooms upstairs. Come on, we've got to get him. Doctor, why did you put out that candle? I was so startled. It slipped out of my hand. You deliberately put it out. I saw you. He got away. Thanks to Dr. Van Rees. Wait for me! Wait! Wait! 
There's a man following me up those stairs. What's your game, Venrice? What do you mean? You know very well what I mean. You tried to kill me downstairs. You make a mistake, Anderson. Oh, no, 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 Doctor. You're the one who's made the mistake. Ask him why he put out the candle and let the man escape from behind that fireplace. I don't have to ask him. If his accomplice, Banker Fleming, were caught, they couldn't frighten the ladies out of this house. Nor could they split the bank's funds between them. You think Fleming robbed his own bank? I don't think. I know he did. Then if we can find Fleming, you're cleared. Search him. <clears throat> now we're getting somewhere. I told you to keep out of my affairs, Van Rees. Why, that's my revolver. How did he get it? Took it out of my pocket when he hit me over the head. The next time you handcuff a man, Doctor, be sure and remove the key from his pocket. Open that door. Now you get in there. I'll see you later, Doctor. Lock it. Put the key in your pocket. Yeah. Now we'll give this hidden room the once over. Shh. Listen. He's the bat. I know he's the bat. Well, if he ain't the bat, and he's in cahoots with him. He fell in downstairs. Didn't know who he was or how he got here. When we looked for him, blew it. He was gone. Here you. Look at me. Look at me. You know me? Did, uh, did you try to communicate from the garage a while ago? Garage? Yes, I... I tried. Have you, uh, have you ever heard of Detective Anderson? Hmm? Think. Anderson's the name. Ander. Anderson. No. When, uh, when you left those people downstairs, where did you go? Answer me! Where did you go? I don't know. Stalling, keep him covered. If he makes one move, shoot. And shoot to kill, understand? I got you. <clears throat> We should have discovered this easily. Anyone could tell it was phony. No flu. My niece says it's a secret panel with an entrance from the outside. Oh, that's so. Would you mind telling me exactly what happened? I'll try. I, I was so frightened. It seemed like a terrible nightmare. The, the fireplace closed just like this.
I'm afraid your niece must have imagined there was a secret panel there. Well, there may have been money in that safe at some time, but it, it certainly isn't there now. Look! A man just crossed that skylight carrying a satchel. A satchel? Yes. I'll get him. Wait. Nobody crossed that skylight. I just wanted to get rid of that detective and do a little detecting myself. Now, the man the bat shot evidently managed to remove that satchel from that safe before the bat attacked him. Now, there's just one place possibly could have hidden it. The hammer. No, behind it. Oh, it's here! See if it contains the bank's money. Look out! There might be a bomb in it. It's the money. All of it? That's it. Now, if you can find Courtly Fleming, our mystery is about ended. It's Banker Fleming and he's dead. It's the ghost I saw. The wristwatch with a luminous dial. The eye that Lizzie saw going up the stairs. Hey, look! There's a fire down there. It's the garage. Come on, get busy. We gotta put it out. Put that satchel back where you found it. Not a sound if you value your lives. <coughs> the man who started that fire did it to get you out of this room. In a moment, he's coming back either through that door or through the window. He's after the money. Now, pick up your guns. Put out the lights. Now, get back. Back into the shadows. When he comes, be quiet. Shh. He's coming. Remember, he's a killer. You're the one who hit me over the head and locked me in the garage, eh? Take off his mask. It was a long chase, Mr. Bat. I'll be got you and got you red-handed. Where did this lead to? To the long way, I think. Let's get to it. He'd stay here in case he comes back. Come on. Wait, 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 wait. wait. It'll take the two of us here. Here, here, here. Take this.
Get a rope. Come, bring a rope, bring a rope, do something, come quick. Get a rope. Get, get, get a rope, get a rope. Do something. Get, 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 get a rope. I got to that. Oh, I caught him, I caught him. Stole my papers, locked me in the garage, and impersonated me. What I'd like to know is, how did you get the dope from headquarters on this case? The way I get everything. With my brain. I've got the greatest brain that ever existed. Stick them up! <laughs> All of you, get back there, you. Say, you, license, put up your hands. Did you hear me? Stick them up! Why should I? I removed the cartridges from that gun not ten minutes ago. All right, boys. Hang on that tree. Get him in there. Get back. Auntie, how did you ever think to say that? By telling my first lie in an otherwise stainless life. You think you've got me, eh? Let me tell you this. There never was a jail built strong enough to hold the bat. And after I've paid my respects to your cheap lockup, I shall return at night. The bat always flies at night and always in a straight line. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to appeal to you in behalf of a very dear friend of mine, the Bat. If people really discover his identity, he's heartbroken. And he goes around for days, killing people without the slightest enjoyment for his work. Now you, dear people, you, you found him out. You've torn the mask from his face. And he really feels quite badly about it. So in order to keep the Bat happy and contented, I want you all to promise me that you won't divulge his identity to anyone. Let him try to fool your friends as he hopes he's fooled you. And in return for your consideration in this matter, he, he promises not to haunt your homes, steal your money, or frighten your little children. Is it a bargain? Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, before I conclude, may I be permitted to say that the bat simply pursues his murderous calling for your entertainment. And that underneath his horrible exterior, he, he really isn't such a bad fellow at all. And, uh, and I ought to know. Thank you. 